you. Um, so I see Deborah has joined us. Welcome, Deborah. Um, so it is 632 and I am calling the CSSJC meeting to order. Um, with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so I'm just going to go around and make sure everyone can hear and be heard. Starting with Philip. Here. Thank you. Uh, Freke. Hi, present. Hello. And Deborah. Here. Thank you. Um, so everybody can hear and be heard. We also have with us Jennifer Moyston from the DEI department and Earl Miller from the Crest department. Um, first, we can go over the agenda and then we will go through the agenda. Um, so we will start with announcements, public comment, member reports, action and discussion items to include the CRESS update, the DEI update, the follow up on the email to the town council, um, ARPA, police chief search, youth empowerment center, status of committee, then end again with public comment and any further meeting agenda setting. Um, does anybody have any announcements? Um, well, I guess it's not necessarily an announcement, but I guess I received an email, which I'm sure you all probably received it from your own district, but this is from my, I guess my district representative, Lynn Riesmer, who's the representative of my district anyway saying something about um you know for people to send in information about uh where they should um spend the remaining uh 4.8 million dollars of ARPA funds and and asking people for for suggestions and things like that and it's interesting because with Lynn's um email to you know to the residents the district two residents um she only talked about like the installation of solar canopy at a high school, senior center kitchen upgrade and activity space, community grants, roads and sidewalks. But I'm thinking it might be interesting for us to, you know, kind of write something and send it to them. And, and obviously for me, first on the list would be the Youth Empowerment Center, uh, but the multicultural and just kind of look at our recommendations and see what we want might want to recommend. But I think we should do that as a, as a um, committee. Did any of you receive a similar email from your district? I did not receive one from district two. Okay. I, I do know that the town council and the town manager's office is being inundated with people's suggestions and they're very various. They're from Amherst Media to uh, Rhodes to the senior center. So I, I, it is, I do suggest that you guys write something and then send it out to your you know, uh, network to help kind of encourage. Yeah, because over here, she's saying to send it to uh, Bachelman as well as to the town council. And then what's, uh, oh, and then another, what, what is the amherstmass.gov council comments? That's where council gets comments then, Jennifer? Yes, yes. That, um, and then those, count, those comments are placed into like um, a packet for the next meeting or they're shared broadly. Okay, okay. So those would be like, available for the public versus the emails that just go directly to the town council though so like they kind of like the school committee if you send in a comment they'll put the ones that have like the special public comment notation up on their screen during meetings town council doesn't put them up on the screen but they are available for other members of the public to peruse on the website if you do it through the council comments okay. yeah because i think we should obviously like just you know, copy every, you know, all of these different folks and then anyone else we want to copy, you know? Mm -hmm. I think, but I think um, so, so should I send, should I forward this to you, Jennifer, and then you can share it with the rest of the committee members? Jennifer, like this sure. that I got from Lynn? 
Sure, I can forward that on. Okay, all right. Because then you will have the same information that I have. Um, because yeah, I thought that that was really interesting. Deborah, do you have any bandwidth to put together a email or like a draft from our committee or do you want me to take it on? Yeah, I don't know, just because I'm, I'm gonna be on vacation yeah. um, like in two days. So. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no a, work on vacation. I to, yeah, I have to kind of get done before then. So yeah, I wouldn't even be able to take this on. Mm -hmm. But I think like we could, you know, maybe just do something like each of us can maybe take a section then or something like that, or maybe you could do a, a draft and then we could all kind of put our input into it. Okay. I don't think it has to be too, I think we can also just cut and paste from <laughs> everything else. <laughs> we've sent. Exactly. We've already sent 10 million things. I don't think we need to reinvent mm -hmm. the wheel here. I mean, if it was something as simple as, you know, the CSSJC asks that you allocate ARPA funds to the previously stated CSWG recommendations, including CRESS, DEI, Youth yeah. Center. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think the only thing that I would say differently, and then obviously mm -hmm. Rick and Philip can say anything else, would be just to put youth empowerment as the number one, just because of everything that happened last year, which is July, July 5th. Yeah. I just think that that's really a top priority right now. No. Philip and Freke, do you have any ideas contrary to what's been said or in support of what's been said or? I don't have anything different. I think that that makes sense, what's been said. I think it's a good idea insofar as other members of the community are going to be doing likewise. We are simply contributing our own voice to what everyone else will be seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they're asking, they're asking for, for feedback on what to spend the, the remaining $4.8 million ARPA funds on. And I think that they are having their meeting on the 17th. So is it okay with everyone if I write what I just said, prioritizing Youth Empowerment Center and send it on our behalf? by fr Friday. Yeah. Would that be okay with people? Because it's. Yep, that works for me. Yeah, it would be good. All right, I will do that. Let me just put that, a reminder in my phone so that I don't forget. Um, let's see. Other announcements? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Um, public comment. I'm not seeing any members of the public with us right now. So I think we can reserve public comment for the end um, if anyone joins before then. Um, any reports from any members about anything? Um, I have like just a quick kind of up, update just because Earl had kind of mentioned at our last meeting that myself, Earl, some of the responders, Brianna, as well as Russ, we took part in a panel uh, with um, the Smith uh, College um, School of Social Work. Um, and it was really great um, conversation and panel. And we kind of gave, uh, well, Brianna put together, you know, a, a slide presentation based on, on some of the reports that her and Alicia had presented previously, um, kind of going over the history and you know the recommendations that CSWG um, came up with. And so myself, Russ and um, Brianna kind of went over it. Then after that, then Earl came on to talk about Cress and, and two of his responders. And so I think it was really well received. And I think you know there was a lot of engagement from the audience where you know, a variety of different participants, but most of them obviously focus on the, the, the social world, social mm -hmm. work world. Um, but I think it was um, a good opportunity to kind of, you know, talk about the work that CSWG did and then obviously Crest too. So I don't know if you want to add anything, Earl. 
No, I would just echo that. It was a really, it was a nice time. It was the first time that we've gotten to present, I think, with the kind of community side of things. And I, I hope it's something we get to do more often. I think it it's nice to tell both sides of that story together. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. It was really nice. And was that for current students or anybody could go? Or? It was an open conference. They had CU, oh. so it was mostly social workers. But I believe there were some folks who just work in behavioral health as well. I'm bummed that I missed that. <laughs> I would have liked to hear it. Um, but hopefully there will be more opportunities. And I'm sure there will. Great. The, the word is getting out in different ways into different audiences. So that's nice to hear. Anybody else have any updates or what are we calling it? Reports. Right. Nothing, from you. Nothing from you, Philip. Nothing from you. No, but I don't have anything. Okay. Um. So I guess we can hear from Earl about how Chris is going. Yeah. Uh, it's summer, so things have slowed down. Um. I think this is this is our first summer, so I don't think we were quite as prepared as I'd hoped for the abrupt slowdown. It was, you know, middle of June. We, we kind of have to switch gears a little bit. Um, I'm really happy with a couple of calls that I just want to highlight that happened uh, over the last month. Um, one is uh, literally the law changed to where folks didn't need documentation to get driver's licenses. And we got our first person in through that the Thursday following. We had been really looking for folks who might benefit from that change in policy and we wanted to capitalize on it. So um, for the person who received it, it was really helpful. Um, it meant not having to go through some very arduous processes. Um, and it's something we were really grateful and we really want to broadcast that to the community who maybe doesn't have documentation that they are able to get licenses and if they need support around that they can absolutely reach out to Crest. we we have the capacity to do that um Kat Newman and Rome Cabrera went to Colorado to the ITGA, the International Town Gown Association Conference, and presented on Crest, um, which was, I think, just a, a really important way to highlight um, the work of being in a college town, the benefits and the challenges that come with that, um, along with Chief Nelson and Chief Ting um, to talk about the kind of behind the scenes processes. Um, for Rome, it was his first work trip. It's something really proud to see responders getting the chance to to go out there and uh, represent the department and, and do so really well. Um, our vehicles are all in. I may have mentioned that at the last meeting. I, I may mention that at every meeting for a while. I'm, I'm very happy that we have wheels now. Um, it's a bit of a real change for us. Um, before that, um, we were often kind of at the whim of other departments and the ability to access their vehicles. Um, we have uh, started a, a really nice relationship with tapestry uh, they will be coming in every tuesday um, to help us with kind of supporting folks around harm reduction um, to learn from each other and to really kind of have a, a mutually beneficial relationship as we have some shared goals and values um, which is really exciting um, we are hoping to begin dispatching 911 in the middle of next month. Um, I have done the pieces that I can do and I'm just kind of waiting for the permission to go. Um, we are as prepared as we can be to go. Um, and we have new, one new member of our team. We did fill our program assistant role um, with Luis uh, Algorin, I believe is how you say his last name. And I will make sure I get that right next time. Uh, he previously worked at the middle school supporting uh, students with IEPs, um, brings another Spanish speaker to our team, which is uh, a real need for us, um, but also just brings in a really lovely attitude. and now means that we have someone who is full-time kind of greeting people as they come into the space, which we think will kind of allow us to capture more folks who are coming into the offices. Um, there are moments where we are stretched really thin these days. Um, Finished the first half of our data kind of collaborative with UMass Donahue Institute. 
um, have a real sense of the tool we'd like to, to use and how we'd like to do that. Um, we changed some of our reporting standards. Allegra, I think you probably know this better than most. Um, it's hard to find reporting systems that don't force you um, to say things about people that don't force you into boxes around gender or race or any of those things. So um, we've really been able to develop our own system that allows us to you know, allows us to capture people's full identities as they identify them, which is really important for us in, in our work. Um, I believe that's it for now. Um, we are in the midst of uh, training season. So um, once a week, we have a four hour kind of just training session. Um, yesterday was um, VCVC from the Wildflower Alliance, which is a kind of peer connection uh, modality. Um, we have some conflict de-escalation trainings coming in. Um, and if folks in the community are looking, we are now beginning to offer a de-escalation training uh, free of price to anyone in Amherst. We'll start next week with um, the Recover Project in Greenfield, which we some community members go to and, and ask us to help them out with that. Um, and then we'll be doing one for businesses in town. Um, and really the goal is as much as we want to show up when we can, build, increasing the capacity of folks um, in town to deal with conflict in ways that don't need a 911 response and um, to hopefully kind of increase that capacity as we go. So um, again, just if folks in town are looking for training on anything they think we might do, um, please reach out. We, we want to either train with you if it's a new thing for us or offer the training to folks if it's something we can. Um, and Kavon in Rome, one of our uh, one of our teams, uh, will be offering a childhood trauma training uh, starting in the fall. Uh, we got a national certification alongside the trauma-informed Hampshire County folks, so they've been in a the eight month process of going through the training to do this. And we're really excited uh, to be able to offer it to folks in the community and um, for responders to start being able to do trainings and supporting folks in that way too. So I think that's it. I'm sure there's been a million things. I'm, I'm hot, uh, <laughs> my, my office is a little hot. And so I'm, uh, I'm doing the best I can with a hot day. So uh, glad to answer any questions. I, Jennifer, I see your hand up. I just have a point of order, and that was, can you repeat what Kat and Rome attended? The, the yes, IG? I, ITGA. IT. ITGA. I believe it's the International Town Gown Association, but um, I will correct myself. If, uh, I will get the information to you if it's different. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm working no. on talking slower. I know it's Too many acronyms, to man. We've got Sorry. a lot. Um, Deborah. Um, hi, Earl. Thanks so much for the uh, update. So I guess a um, couple of questions, just like more clarification. Um, one is, so the program assistant, I know you said greeter, but I'm assuming what are some of the other tasks that this, this person will be doing? And and how are you all paying for, the, for this program assistant? Is it grant? Is it something that's in the budget already? Yeah, this is a budget position. Um, the only grant funded position is Kat Newman's implementation manager position. Um, this is our main administrative position. So things like payroll, um, you know, making sure that folks are getting the benefits, training. Uh, this person will be kind of uh, putting together our, our record keeping system. We have one now, but we're hoping that Luis will be around for a while so he can develop a system that really works for him. Um, helping with some of the data pieces. Um, we had the Council of State Government grant. Uh, we're starting a new grant with the Harvard Kennedy Center in the next month. Um, he'll be a part of, of helping out with that. Um, he is not a deployable staff. Um, and really, um, we identified that um, what we've learned is that if you can be deployed, you will be deployed. And we really do need someone to make sure that the administrative tasks are done. So um, yeah, his focus is purely administrative uh, and he'll be in, uh, as far as Greeter, his office is just where the window is when you come in. So literally, I, um, you know, kind of being the consistent person in the office, uh, we really did look for uh, beyond just the administrative background, a customer service background. We want this to be someone who can also support us to engage. We have a lot of folks coming up now for things that don't even really rise to the level of a crest response. They're just looking for, uh, you know, Googleable connections to resources. So that also will be part of the job. Um, and he's been in it for two days. So, uh, you know, we'll look at capacity and things after he's been around for a while. Okay. 
Okay, good. No, that's good. I'm happy that that's happening, but I just wanted to know, given all the budget questions and things like that, that, you know, I'm happy that it's also part of the budget and everything. So that obviously will be long-term because you, you all definitely need someone to kind of deal with all of the kind of administrative, you know, paperwork and also yeah. greeter and so on and so forth and someone to kind of stay at home base while you yes. all are out and about. So yeah, that's excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I have two more questions though. One is around the, you know, dispatch so I, I do know that you were saying that, yeah, you all have done everything that you could, but things are still kind of held up. Can you kind of say a little bit more about that? Because I think it'll be important for our committee to know, because then we, if we need to motiv mo you know, motivate to kind of get support for Crest, because you know, that was one of the things that CSWG wanted was for um, you know, Crest to be, you know, go into you know, the, the, the system so that people could just call in that you all could be deployed that way. Um, so yeah, could you share a little bit more? Because I think I know more about it because we, we talked at the panel and you kind of shared a little bit about that, but could you kind of talk yeah. more about that, please? Yeah, so the kind of final place we, where we are is the approval of uh, the police chief and the dispatch director. Um, and so, you know, we are providing as much uh, information, knowledge. We have the policies. We've had a dispatch policy in paper since uh, February. Uh, we have general policies that, uh, you know, direct the conduct and the response of crest responders since November. Um, but we're, there's a last minute review of those happening. Um, but those are the folks who uh, need to approve along with, uh, I believe this being impacted by some union bar, uh, some union negotiations uh, with the dispatch union. So, and the police union. So, um, you know, uh, those are things that the town manager would need to answer a uh, kind of the part of why I'm saying that I've done what I can do is the decision points are that I can make have already been made I've kind of uh, ran through the input points the things I can do so now we are in a little bit of a, a, a waiting place until uh, the town manager police chief and dispatch director uh, make their final decisions. So have they given you all any type of heads up in terms of when is this going to happen? I mean, what have they said? Well, listen, we're talking to XYZ PDQ and therefore it'll happen in this date and this time. Because obviously if, if there isn't a date and time, that means it can be <laughs> God knows when. So... Yeah, my, my sense is we're talking a matter of weeks, not months. Um, so, you know, my, my hope uh, is that this will happen during the summer. My, my expectation is that this will happen during the summer. Um, but that's, you know, as far as I, I, I don't want to make promises for dates that I can't decide. Okay. Sorry. So, I'm sorry if that wasn't a satisfying answer, but it's kind of the best I got. No, I, I get it because obviously the ball is not in your court. You've done all that you could on your end. Now the ball is in, you know, Paul Bachman and, and you know, the, the dispatch folks and also the union to kind of get things going so that it, this can get, um, you know, finalized and that you all can give, be given the green light to, to be able to, you know, to have dispatch, dispatch calls <laughs> to you and things like that. Um, so, so that's why I'm saying, you know, is there something, you know, you know, should, should it be because we have a, we have a, a letter out to the town council and Bachman and so on and so forth, which I know we're going to get an update, but this could be something that we could tack on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, my, because I, this yeah, is sorry. important. Yeah, it's absolutely, uh, it's critically important to me that we, we get moving on this. Um, my, my sense is that um, if this thing is a matter of weeks, then, then I think we're, we're kind of at the crest point and there isn't much need for that. Um, I would say if we're still having this conversation in September, I'll need all the help that uh, I can get. Okay, okay. All right, I mean, I'd like to hear from others. Um, I have one more question, but I'd like to hear from others. Like, what do you all think about this? I don't know if Freke or Philip have anything that they want to say, um, but I certainly have concerns if it's continuing to be pushed off. I mean, I guess, I don't know if I made up July in my head or if that's what originally might have been quoted to us. Um, and and again, it's, I will say it's it's been my hope every month since, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, so then I guess then what we could do is revisit this. Um, like you said, you know, I, I think you're, you're willing to give this a little bit of time. But like you said, by September, when we when we have our meeting in September, if this hasn't been resolved, then we need to we need to make sure that we bring in this forward. I I certainly agree. I and I don't know if Earl can give a satisfying answer to this question, but is there resistance? Is that the problem or is it um um, I, you know, I certainly think there are, we, there are still doubters of, of Crest. I think there are still folks who are, you know, whether, you know, it's not my place to say whether it's reasonable or not, but who are worried about it. There's um, concerns about things like liability. Uh, I, I do think it's important to say that I get the concerns about us being a new thing in Amherst, but we are not a new thing nationally. Um, there's an article that came out in the Times today about this being one of the kind of most uh, innovative things to come out of the, the reform around the murder of George Floyd. Um, the Harvard cohort will be in, we will be in that with Baltimore and Chicago. Um, these are major cities. Um, so yeah, I think there's I think there's always going to be resistance to something that's new and something that feels different for folks. And, um, you know, my answer to anybody on that is uh, we have since September demonstrated an ability to deal with incredibly complex situations um, without the need for anyone to come in behind us. Um, no responder in the country has been killed in the history of this work. Um, and uh, Amherst has a much safer crime rate than a lot of those. So, you know, Chicago is starting there as it seems like it's probably time. Um, and I guess I just, Deborah, did you want to ask your last question first? And then yeah, can... let me just ask one, one final question. Sorry, I'm taking a lot of airtime, but I just wanted to, you know, take the opportunity. It's just like, you know, just kind of like talking to different community members. One of the things, because remember, one of the things that CSWG wanted was to make sure that, um, the police department would not be responding to anything that was nonviolent, right? Um, which again, comes back to that point of, you know, we don't want them responding to noise complaints and any type of um, complaints that doesn't include, you know, doesn't, won't, won't lead to, or, you know, doesn't start out with like violence, right? Um, so, so, and I know that you've said obviously capacity and, um, time and, and and so on and so forth and, and you all are going to kind of work towards that one of the things too and and obviously you know you all just started and I'm sure you're thinking about this but kind of talking to different community members around Crest which everyone's really excited about but we also want you all to to, to have to be able to do most with your time one and then two to make sure that the police can kind of get get pulled back, right, from, from these types of things, especially given what, what transpired last year on July 5th, which was a noise complaint and, and how it went terribly, terribly wrong. So one of the things is, you know, a lot of times when I hear you all talk about what Crest is doing, which is all great work, it does seem like you all are very hands-on with a lot. You see what I'm saying? And you all are getting utilized hands-on for a lot of things, a lot of like social service type of things, right? Which is great. However, CSWG, what we envisioned was that, yeah, you could you can kind of help out for maybe one, two times or whatever. But then after that, there's kind of like a handoff, you know, a really kind of not just, hey, here, here's a referral and go your way. Not that, you know, but a handoff like, OK, here, we're bringing you to this, um, you know, agency or what have you. We're introducing you to Joe, Joe Schmo, and here's Joe Schmo. He's great. Blah, 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 blah. And now Joe Schmo kind of does the day-to-day, the -day, right? So, so those are the things that I'm, I guess I'm starting to picture and some of the community members were starting to have to, that, those conversations. Because like you said, you know, capacity is one, one of the things, obviously budget, you know, and I know that when we've had conversations around budget, I know you've been kind of a little bit wary about like, well, you know, budget is what it is. So, um, so I guess it's more so kind of like, okay, how can you, you all's time be utilized the best way possible to then be able to do more so that the, the police are called in less because ultimately, right, that was what we were trying to look at when we were looking at alternative program to policing 
is what would be the alternative so that we don't have to, you know, so that the community doesn't have to call them as often. And so if then, if, if the community is not going to call them as often, that means they're going to be calling you all. Right. So, um, so yeah. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts about that? Because I mean, I guess, again, like I said, you all are new and everyone wants to use you and they want to use you from point A until point Z, but you all might not be able to do point A to point Z. You might be able to do point A to point C and then a handoff to the, an agency. So. Yeah. So firstly, I would say we have not turned down a call um, that's coming to the office. Uh, we have, I think we talk a lot about the social service -y things because I, I just think they're easier to talk about than the kind of angry person we show up, help them calm down and just kind of move along. That happens fairly frequently. Um, so I think there's just a matter of the calls coming in um, as we will prioritize 911 calls. We will prioritize calls for people in crisis um, as they you know, have the most imminent risk to folks. Um, and so the more we get of those, we're already looking to transition some of our cases back to providers or to providers. Um, I do think it's important to just say that um, it is not infrequently that we hand off a case and then it just lands back with us, that the providers don't have the staff. Um, and it most often happens to black and brown people. We provide a handoff to a service. We think things have gone well. You know, we've supported up to the point that we think it's a natural place for us to step back. And then two weeks later, the person is, we're getting a call because they're back in crisis. The transportation to the provider fell through. The clinician left. The, clin the program doesn't take their insurance. That was a big one we experienced this year. Or frankly, a not insignificant amount of folks have lost their mass health uh, out of nowhere. So we, we hope that as the kind of system increases its capacity, we're able to do more handoffs. We would love to get people back to community providers who are going to be the people who support you for most of your life, right? Your therapists, the, the social workers at those places. Um, there are, I, I don't think there is a provider that, that a uh, large provider that operates in, in Amherst that we haven't had some challenges with. Um, so uh, we, we have a social service meeting. We're trying to orient those things the best we can. Um, but it is it is worth mentioning that there is a crisis in the provider space and it is it is impacting us um, just as well. It's not that we're kind of wanting to keep engaging, but the situation just keeps bouncing back to crisis because um, there's not even a kind of medium level of support. And, you know, one of the one of the most frightening pieces for me is how many people are getting um their providers are not able to provide them transportation for injectionable medications, which are really uh, dangerous medications to just stop taking. Um, and we are having to step into those situations uh, fairly frequently. So um, yeah, that's that's the answer is one we would love we we hope that as 911 calls come in we will prioritize those things because we do know that that's our we're a public surf, uh, safety agency that's what we need to be doing and we def we we very much need help from community providers um, to increase their capacity and I would I would just say having more offices in Northampton does not help us. Um, people are not wanting to get on a bus for 45 minutes to go to Northampton to do a thing that historically they've been able to do in Amherst. Um, and I, I understand that particularly for folks who um, have experienced challenges with, with the PVTA, which is not a small number of folks. So um, it, that, that I, I'm sure, I hope you can hear, I think about this thing a whole bunch because um, it, it is, it is, we are not the best long-term support for people. We are just not. Um, and we we really would like for folks to have more uh, access to supports. Yeah, because yeah, yeah as, as, I, as I was saying, that was never what we had envisioned anyway for you all to be like long-term support. And of course, you know, not to say that we don't want to, I mean, that's why you all are there is to help. But again, like you said, right, the focus is public safety. Um, and, you know, and even though obviously public safety delves into a bunch of different things that will be social service too, right, because you're trying to um, address the whole person, but doesn't necessarily mean that it, Crest has to address the whole person, right? Yeah. Uh, Crest can do the, the kind of connection and the handoff to these social service agencies. Um, but yeah, you know, I get it that a lot of social service agencies, you know, are having issues and things like that. But it's just something that obviously, just so you know, Earl, obviously that I'm thinking about other community members I'm thinking about um, because, you know, we want to make sure that you all kind of stay 
you know, on point in terms of, you know, the mission and vision and things like that. So. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Freka, I said that you had your hand up. Did you still want to say something? I can't really hear you, Freke. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, I was saying, uh, Elle mentioned an article, and I just wanted to know what the title of the article in the Times is so that I could read up on it. I will get that for you right now. I... Uh, the it's the title is the overlooked enduring legacy of the George Floyd protests, and it's Time Magazine, which is. But those sorts of things are coming out all the time. When we were in D.C. at the Georgetown convening, DOJ was there saying some of the same things that this sort of, you know, having a practical alternative was more important than was was as important as kind of reforming what already existed that um and so you know i think you're just hearing lots of um lots of movement northampton is starting their department they're in training cambridge is starting a department and there are various communities throughout the commonwealth that are exploring this i, I think one of the most exciting things in the last two months it's not just western mass doing this we have Cambridge with us and um and that's something we really look forward to is is the growth of this because certainly it will be easier the more departments there are we are fighting every fight for the first time and while I, it's exciting um I hope it's memorable I hope we put up a good fight where we can um it is it is very tiring thank you I got the article and I got the email from Jennifer thank you Oh, the, the other thing just to mention to folks is uh, for the rest of the summer, I'll be taking Fridays off. This is an attempt. I'm never going to give my I, I can't take a week off right now. I don't feel like the baby's out of the crib yet, um, but I do need to take care of myself a little bit. And I have my son up for the summer. So I just if folks are looking for me in town, my days will, will go down by one. And uh, I'm not going to make an apology for that. I hope that everybody is doing the things they need to do to take care of themselves. Good for you. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, and I, I'm glad to hear the update about the department. It sounds like you're still moving along. Um, I would be interested to see, and I know I keep on saying this, but you know, in terms of comparison, so I guess I just think of summer as being a time where there's so much idle time for so many people, especially youth, that like you think that there might be some increase in need of services there in terms of like getting them into something productive um so we, we did a we did a we that was our last big rush of the year was mm -hmm. i would say from the last day of school for about 10 days we were desperately trying to find summer camp placements for kids um and we were able to be successful in most of those we were able to get some kids in the state camps local camps um and next year now that we know that that'll be a big need uh we're looking to build some relationships through the school year um to be able to offer some some easier handoffs um and uh, you know i would say you know we we we're not seeing an increase in challenge with kids um we are seeing kind of a severity um issue um you know sometimes when we show up to calls there's also now the kind of dehydration effect like if you've ever worked with somebody who has uh, mental health challenges on a normal basis and now they haven't drank water for a few hours they've been out in the sun we're seeing that kind of increase we're, we're, we're seeing a big uptick in uh, folks with dementia and wandering and i would encourage folks if you see a neighbor in need please reach out to someone um because we're we're having folks just sometimes be brought up to our office and then there's a challenge of figuring out where they live um so if you have someone in your community who's a, a wanderer please do feel free to reach out to us we would love to engage with that person before we run up uh, upon them um particularly so we know where to bring them back to and, and who supports them um but that's you know there's an increasing challenge around dementia in town um and you know i think sometimes we can think of that as just a problem for the elderly but it is very much an intergenerational challenge and there are folks of all ages all means right now really being impacted um by the lack of 
uh, nursing home beds, by lack of hospital beds. Um, and uh, I just think about those caregivers an awful lot. It's a very challenging thing and, and I appreciate folks trying their best. Thank you. Uh, and I would say we we this is a small window. I would say we're going to get till probably early July, um, and then we expect things to start to pick up soon as um, as, as as school starts and and families try to get back to school. Things we're doing a ton of work right now to figure out what the back to school support system looks like and how to help young people navigate that. Um, you know, I, I know that not everybody has easy access to the things you need to get back to school. So we're working with as many folks as we can to help with that access. Perfect. Sorry if that was a long answer, but I appreciate nope. it. And I think at the end of the summer, I hope to have a better sense of the numbers. I, I would just offer that call volumes are down all around. Um, and we don't know whether that's kind of the first real post pandemic year people are breathing a little different or uh, maybe everybody's going on vacation for the first time but it looks like kind of town-wide uh, all services the calls are down a little bit uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments regarding press Uh, just, uh, I'll be reaching out to folks. We're we're looking to plan some things in September for our our year anniversary, um, and so we we definitely will be reaching out to this group as well as uh, members of the CSWG to to talk about involvement in that. Um, and I think to Deb's point, to Deborah's point earlier, also thinking about how do we talk about how we got here and how can we encourage other communities to to go through what is a challenging um, and and I wouldn't say it was easy, but a process that is doable and that has been demonstrated in Amherst to be doable. Yeah, Great. let us know about that for sure. Absolutely. Involved. All right, I'll get out of here. Jennifer, show's yours. See you all soon. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All right, on to DEI updates. Yes, so the director is unable to join us due to a conflict with the class that she's taking from the ADL. Um, the course ends next week and she will attend the next meeting. So she wrote up a write up so Juneteenth celebration. She says that the weather cooperated with the HRC and the town sponsored events and a large crowd that came and went throughout the day, enjoyed three music performers, two dance performers, and a number of craft and food vendors. There was an estimated 200 people, 250 people and attended throughout the day. And the reports from the other events that were held at Mill River, the Mill District, and the Ancestral Bridges events were also well attended. Um, the reading, we had the reading of Frederick Douglass's speech on July 5th. Um, there were approximately 25 people there. And then there was an, like a discussion after the reading. And um, then she speak, She wrote about the Youth Empowerment Center. So I don't know if you want me to wait for that piece or if you want me just to talk about it now, because it's uh, listed as an agenda item. So I think we can, can talk about it then. Yeah, we can talk about it then. Okay. Um, and so the. DEI and CRESS are still anticipating an AmeriCorps member who will be working exclusively on youth empowerment issues. In the interim, the DEI staff are giving some thoughts to the types of programming to be offered. It is understood that there is a desire for the youth to have some autonomy over the subject matters. Some programming must be pre-planned. However, there will be ample opportunities for the youth to have autonomy over the future plans and the funding of the events and activities must comply with legal and fiscal parameters, which which will require input from the DEI staff. So cultural events and workshops planning for the 2023-2024 fiscal year is underway. DEI hopes to establish an event committee. There is no contract, no contract has been finalized with for Rob, the DEI director and the finance director are working to secure a final contract. And the DEI director has begun a draft of a year in review document to document the work of the department, both successes and challenges, so that recommendations can be made regarding goals for the 2023-2024 year. 
and that that was it. Um, so you said that they were working on finalizing a contract for Rob. Does that mean that a vendor has been identified or a contractor, the, the whatever they're going to call that? Like the oh, person. Will somebody had submitted a, a, a quote, had responded to the RFP that came out. Um, okay. And it's a, a national organization that has ties to lo local um, to the local area. And I think they're trying to finalize the contract with them. Per oh. dated. So there is an identified contractor that will be doing the Rob work. We're hoping, yes, depending on As the, uh, okay. yeah. Deborah. Well, I guess, yeah, that's the thing. So you said that there's a contractor already or there isn't? No, they're working on a contract with only one person responded to the RFP. And so they're working to negotiate a contract with them. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't it the, the RFP ever sent to us? I don't know if she sent it to you. I don't, I don't recall receiving it, but I know I get a lot of emails, so I could have missed it. Can you send that to us again, please? Um, I can't send that tonight, but I can tomorrow. Okay. I'll yeah, talk to her great. about it and, and, mm -hmm and let her know she'll send it. Yeah, yeah, because it definitely is important because like I said, you know, I know I did and I, I think the other members too had an issue with some of the things that, that you know, Paul Bachman had put in that report, which kind of went over things that CSWG already did um, in, in regards to, to Rob. And so we wanted to make sure that those things were not in the RFP. Um, so it's not wasting all our time and the contractor's time and, and, and this person could just get to doing the work of putting this board in place. Um, so yeah, if you can send that, because if, if it was sent, I, I could have missed it. I'm not saying it wasn't, I could have missed it. So if you could send it out, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, and, you know, just keep us posted, you know, even if the contractor, you know, the contract does, does get, done if you could just um you know send that to us or let us know when that happens because obviously that's something that's really urgent and you know hopefully needs to be put in place like i said yesterday um because of given the fact that the community doesn't have a place really to go to to complain about the police um and then the other thing you said too was that the um AmeriCorps person or what have you isn't isn't hired yet. Um, but again, in, and I, I guess we'll talk more about the youth empowerment because later, um, because we definitely need to discuss that, you know, that's great, but, you know, we need to figure that out in terms of the youth empowerment situation. Um, but we can, we can talk about that later in the agenda. Um, I do want to say two other things. Thanks, um, Jennifer, for you know, sending out the meeting, you know, the, the links and the um, reminders and the, you know, and the agenda beforehand, really appreciate it because that kind of, you know, gets me to kind of refocus and, and, and focus on, on this group, which I think is, you know, critically important. And then two, the Juneteenth um, event was really wonderful, Jennifer, and I know that you were obviously, you know, um, one of the main people involved in it, as well as the um, Amity Day too. Um, that was really wonderful. So thank you so much for all your efforts and everything that, that you've been doing to really um, showcase, um, you know, diversity within this, this community and really highlight it and make it a, a, a priority with these events. So thank you. Thank you, much appreciated. Philip or Freke, do you have any questions, comments? No, I don't have anything. Is um, this Philip's last meeting? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it will be my last meeting. I don't know that anybody has anything to say after that, Philip. That's just <laughs> oh, you, we're all just very sad. Um, but 
I suppose we can move along if, if there's nothing more here. And I just, I would like to echo what Deborah did say. I think that the events that you've been working to put on have been wonderful. And um, I unfortunately wasn't able to make the Juneteenth event, but I did make the Race Amity Day and the old young basketball tournament and the human rights heroes. It was a lot of things happening all at once and very well attended. And it was just nice to see the community coming together in, in a joyful celebration. So thank you for your work on that. Um, I guess we can talk about the follow-up to the town, to the email, to the town council. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can bring that up. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm to, let me see if I can screen share. Are you seeing the leather? It says you are screen sharing, but we don't. Oh. I just see a blank space. Oh, it says you were screen. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Now are you? Okay. Um, so this is the letter that was sent to the town council. And it outlines the summarizes again the letter packet project thing that we sent um, prior to our last meeting with them and requests a response by June 30th and the only response that I received was that they'd received my email so um I am I on can you see me on top of the email and then I think maybe because you have me in a for your the way that you have your viewing set up I, view options do you see that i see you and i don't see anybody else but i also have a hard time when i screen share so now does it just say you're sharing screen yeah but now i'm at the bottom yeah, yeah. so i don't i'm gonna unscreen share because i feel like it's not really helpful um i mean that was the letter that was sent and basically asked for a response by Oh dear, what's happening? Is everything okay? Am I still here? Okay. Um, so there was no response um, is basically the update that I have. Um, so I don't have any suggestions as to how to proceed because I feel like any letter that we send is just going to be not responded to in a meaningful manner um uh, you know i i was acknowledged receipt and that was about it and um i don't believe that anything was mentioned during the town council meeting on the 26th regarding cssjc and next steps i was not able to attend the whole thing um, so I, I could be mistaken, but I, as far as I am aware, there was no further communication or discussion about it. So, um, um I, I, might I suggest that you re reach out to possibly Lynn, just because that response is typical to what, when people send emails, there's not a lot of comment made. So, mm -hmm. and I know. I understand if you feel like how many times do you have to reach out, but I would just, I'm not quite sure what you would say in that email, but I would suggest uh, reaching back out. But I understand the, the back and forth with it. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Deborah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know about reaching back out to them because again, like we've reached out to them. Um, already several times i think we need to kind of figure out like alternatives 
Uh, one is, I thought it was liaisons from the town council that was supposed to be attending our meetings. I don't even see them in attendance. Um, and I haven't really seen any of them in attendance for quite a while. So that might be a way to go is to, um, you know, contact one of the liaisons and, and kind of, you know, really state how frustrating this is and really how they're, how they're basically disregarding us and stuff like that. Because for me, you know, I, I don't really take it as they're busy or whatever. We're one of the committees that supposed to be advising them about these issues. And they talk about, you know, the last last town council meeting that I remember that I even had to, had to get off because they were, you know, talking until midnight was about how this was a priority and so on and so forth. And then we communicate with them and then there's no response. So obviously that's not telling me that, that, that we're a priority. Um, so it's kind of like reaching out to the liaisons um, or, you know, the other thing would be to kind of, and Philip, you might be better to, to kind of, um, you know, guide us along this, you know, to kind of get maybe uh, our group, HRC, and the reparations group to kind of send a joint response or to kind of, you know, communicate, uh, you know, or the other thing too would be for, you know, our chair to kind of communicate with someone on the town council, maybe Alicia, or maybe someone to kind of really say like, hey, you know, this is not acceptable, you know, what is going on here? Um, because it's not acceptable what they're doing in terms of like not communicating with us or, or the other thing is we go, you know, we, we ask to be on the agenda the next town council meeting and we bring our grievances there. So, I mean, we have to take it the next step or we put it on the newspaper, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, there's a variety of different options. We just need to figure out what's the best option right now. I don't think emailing them again is, is a good option. You know what I'm saying? I think that's just, you know, more dead air. We need to kind of escalate to the next next step, whatever the next step is. And I just presented several options. Let me double check because I think when I sent the email, I sent it to everybody, but then I think I also sent it to our liaison at the same time. Um, just in terms of whether or not that would be, yes, I did. I sent it, I said I wanted to follow up under separate cover as our liaison to town council. I hope the letter I just sent will be included in the next meeting's packet and brought as a discussion item. So there was, so that step already happened, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think we, we you know, I, I, I guess, like I said, either we, we have to do a soft approach where we're contacting the liaisons or someone on the town council to kind of really bring this to the event, or we do the more outright approach, which is add us to the agenda, because we're going to bring this up, because obviously, you know, if we don't show up, and then in the meantime, add us to the agenda, and we also send it to the newspapers, because I don't think we should just have them added to the agenda, we should also put them on blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually a good idea of asking to be put on the agenda. I mean, I think they're having a meeting on Monday, the 17th, um, seeing if we could get that on the agenda also for the 17th, I doubt it, but I, I do feel like this frustration is not just to this committee. I've talked to other chairs and other various committees and it very much does seem like a lot of committees are just there in town to be there in town rather than to advise rather than to be listened to and so i think it just gets frustrating to a point where it's like okay well we're doing all this work and you want us to continue doing all this work and slash you want bipoc bipoc folks to be on your town committees to do this work yet who wants to be a part of stuff that's not like being listened to like i mean look at one of our previous committee members I think that she made that very clear that was a reason why she was leaving exactly yep oh, well just so you all know like I said I mean I'm going to be on vacation this next week so you know I know I wouldn't be able to to be at the at the meeting um 
so you know we might want to do it because i know i i would definitely want to speak and mm -hmm. and things like that so we might want to do it at the next the next meeting but I, of course if if we're still able to get it in and there's others that want to be at the meeting on monday then i wouldn't i'm fine with not being there too because obviously it's not about me it's about the agenda you know our our uh, action items they have a tentative meeting for august 7th and then a regular scheduled meeting for the 21st of August. Say that I, again, Jennifer. Sorry, I said say that I'm again. looking at their calendar. So I see a tentative meeting on August 7th, mm -hmm. which they may or may not have. And then there is a regular scheduled meeting for the 21st of August. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could kind of, um, Look at the 21st. So I will be out of town on the 21st, but I oh. wouldn't get in the way of that. I could submit a statement or something if that would be, if that works for other people. Well, I guess it would have to work for Freke because Philip will be gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just be for myself and Freke. Right. Um, <laughs> what about though, what about Monday? Are more people available on Monday? Well, Fred, well, Jennifer, would we be able to get 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 the, the agenda in for Monday? They are posting, they have to post the agenda by the end of the day tomorrow at 430. So there's the possibility if you reach out to ask if you can be included on the agenda. When you said the seventh is just tentative? Yeah, but I mean, the nice thing is if it's just tentative, there's the possibility if they do have that meeting that, you know, you would have more ample time yeah. to have conversation because it won't be lo overloaded with agenda items. We could do maybe, what about the seventh? I, I would say the seventh would be a good, if a, kind of what Jennifer was saying, it sounds like if it's tentative, maybe it means it's not already super scheduled with lots of stuff. For them to talk about so that might be a good time to try and sit with them because i know the monday meeting is supposed to be about arpa again so i imagine that will be somewhat full although we also have things to say about arpa um i think the seventh would be more ideal it might give a little bit more time to just collect oh no my battery's not um sorry yeah collect our thoughts and kind yeah. of everything yeah ready in terms of what we want to present and everything mm -hmm. yeah that would make sense what about you freke it also gives us um enough time to speak to members of the council um, and with regard to app or on Monday, if there is anything that needs to be said, there is room to do so with public comment. Um, and so since what we're looking for is a bit broader, then I suppose more time to think about that issue would be beneficial. In that case, I'm, I'd lean more towards the seventh. So I can send a separate email to them about the seventh. Yeah, I think it, you know, I think it might be an email, but also reaching out to our liaison mm -hmm. and or, you know, like Alicia or someone like that. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the other council person, the one that facilitated the meeting, because I know that she's also. Oh, Michelle. Um, yeah, Michelle, you know, so folks like that to just be like, you know, because I think if we just send them an email saying we want to be on the agenda, we might be get having the same thing, you know? Right. right. Okay. So I will reach out to those three specifically, but also to Lynn and Anna as the chair and vice chair of council to, because I think Lynn is the one who sets the agenda. So yeah. I just had a thought, and obviously I'll be gone in August. So it's completely your guys's choice but maybe inviting them to the next cssjc meeting might be 
more fruitful in the conversation because it does seem like every time we go to town council there's something else happening someone else is doing whatever and so I don't know like I do feel like we've had more fruitful conversations when they do come to see us as JC. That might not be the worst idea. Mm -hmm. um, Cause actually I feel like as a, if so this, I'm going into another topic, but in terms of like, if, if we don't get any replacements, the three of us won't make a quorum. So it's not like we could vote on anything anyway. So if we're just going to be able to discuss things as a committee of three, am I correct in that, Jen? Yeah. Um, but we could still discuss with council things that are important without voting on anything. Would that be correct again? Yes. Okay. Um, so when there's not a quorum, none of the open meet, like the open meeting laws do not apply in the same, same way, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it might be, if it ran similar to the way that it did last year, last time where it ended up being like their meeting at your meeting, if that makes, if you recall, mm -hmm. that might work. Um, Cause I can post it. I just don't, I don't have a good idea about that because there's not a quorum. So posting a meeting for not a quorum well, and that's something that's something that we're going to have to discuss, though. You know, obviously that's on the agenda, right? Like it know, is on the agenda. Yeah, we, we need to talk about that because this whole thing about not a quorum and not being able to vote and stuff, that's not going to be doable. You know, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to figure that out. Um, so so something's going to have to change in order for us to to be able to vote and to be able to do things. Um, so. Um, but anyway, I think I think we need to set that to the side because until we talk about CSSJC, because that's going to be unacceptable too. This whole thing about we're not a quorum, blah 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 blah. No, I'm not feeling that. You know, um, we're going to have to figure that out. So I guess my thing is let's focus on just what do we want to do with the town council, you know, um, and then we can deal with the quorum piece separately. Um, so I think I like I like Phil's idea about having them join us like they did last time, which how did that whole thing happen? Was it like we had our meeting and then they, they just came in? Well, what, what, what was what was the process for that? It became a council meeting. No, no, no. I remember that. I was there. But I'm saying what was the process to, to schedule it? How did how did it become scheduled? How did it happen? So we reached out to the to the council president, Lynn, mm -hmm. to ask about the date and to confirm time and date. And then it moved from there. Okay. And basically, so we, we just picked a day that was whatever, was it a day that worked for us and then they joined our meeting? Um, in theory, that was the way that it was presented, but it, it turned into the, you got, it turned into a, special meeting with the town council. Okay, or so town why, council don't we, why don't we get that process going? I like that the best. So I'm looking at the second Wednesday. I'm going to try and keep that consistent for now until if, if that works still for people so that we can be more consistent about like timing for posting and timing for us. So it's not like, whoa, when are we meeting? Um, so the second Wednesday in August is the 9th. Yeah. So that can be our next meeting at 6 30. And I can reach out to Lynn to invite council to join us. Yeah, I like that actually the best. Mm -hmm. okay. And that would be like let, let's make sure the time. So we're sticking with 6 30, right? 6 30. Does that work for people? It's yeah. It's a little bit better than six. So 6 30 is good. Rekha, is that okay for you? Okay. Okay, so let me add that. I'll merely uh, point out that with three people having um, town council come, that's a that's a little light, and it, we are in transition. Um, but since this is a case where we are trying to have a conversation, perhaps it's appropriate. 
Yeah, I mean, frick it, we just have to keep the train moving. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is not about us at the end of the day. It's about the, the issues. And if we're going to wait until we're a bigger body, then, then we don't know when that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather, even if it's just three of us, we're warriors and let's let's get it done. I concur. What so, we need to do, though, is reach out to different people to make sure that the community is on. If, we, yeah. if we're able to schedule this, like for me, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be reaching out. And I think we need to go to the paper, too, to mm -hmm. put it out before um, the meeting happens. Yeah. We, need, we need the community support so that it's, the, think, it's not just the three of us. It's us and the community. Right. I think I like that idea a lot. Um, I'm just going to switch devices because my battery is dying so. Hold Recording, recording. Am I here twice? Yeah, I hear you echo. Hopefully, she's gonna get back on. Are we doing like a little pause? Oh, there she is. You're muted. Everything's on the opposite side on my phone than it was on the computer, so I apologize. Um, I think what Deborah was saying about having trying to have the community involved as well is an important piece of the conversation. So um, I like that idea. I will reach out to see if we can schedule that and then if that does not work for the council to meet, I will let you all know. Um, and I think that would be the most reasonable next step we can take at this point. It seems like trying to keep the conversation going is important and um, being a little bit more direct about saying, okay, let's meet at this time rather than get back to us by this time. Maybe that will um, be more. Would you still be able to reach out to like our liaisons and or Alicia, Michelle? I will do that as well, yeah. All right, great. Um, now I lost the... Does anyone else have anything on that before we move on? All right, let's see, what do we have next? Um, ARPA, well, I think what I had originally thought of was what Deborah was saying in her announcement was that there would be a meeting on the 17th and we should weigh in on it. So I think that's all I had to say. I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts about ARPA at this point or well, we're gonna send our comments, right? Like when when I had talked about in my announcement. So yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Um. So I have police chief search on here. I haven't heard anything from anybody about it, and about you know reaching out to this group to see if we would be a part of it, as we had asked to be in the letter that we had sent i mean i think the from my understanding cap uh, chief chief ting is the interim chief for now and they are doing a more robust search was my understanding of things because they need someone for the immediate spot 
um, and that they were hoping to have a community involved and engaged process for the police chief search. But I have not heard that it has started or I have not heard that they are asking for any input as of yet. Um, so I don't know when that will start or I don't know if Jennifer has heard anything about that. Um, well, why don't we invite Ting to our next meeting? Well, okay. well, it, as long as uh, if they fit the town council, then we won't be able to, but right. I think we need to invite them. So if the town council doesn't happen, let's invite them to, to the meeting. If not, we'll invite them to the, the one following. Because I okay. think that they need, you know, Ting needs to understand that we need to be involved. We need to be kept updated. And this needs to be a tra transparent process for the entire community. Right. This can't be a, a, a hiding show in terms of who's going to be the police chief. And they need to understand what are the important things that the community is looking for um, in regards to it. So they need to get feedback from the community and then feedback from key um, committees like our committee, HRC and, and reparations, mm -hmm. and then any other committees, you know, in the town. But, you know, I think we need to have a conversation with Tim. Because okay. he, already, he already assumed it. I believe so he is the interim and so when it comes to the wide search he's not involved in that piece so that would really fall to the town manager but i i think for other reasons it's appropriate to invite him to a meeting so that you know you guys have conversations and have an understanding of each other but he doesn't have anything to do with the search that's going to end up happening okay so he doesn't have anything with the search so then that's Tom, that's uh Bachelman, right Mm -hmm. the HR director, town manager. All right, so then I guess we have to invite them, but I still think it's important for us to, to have Tink come. I do, I, so, uh, yeah. Was there much interaction with him during the CSWG? I know you met with Livingstone a few times, but yeah, he Yeah, involved? he came, yeah, Tink and someone else had come too. I don't know if they, it was like the community, you know, outreach person or whatever. I believe it was like mm -hmm. three of them that had come to, you know, one of one or two of our meetings. Um, so, so yeah, I do recall us meeting with him previously. Um, so does anybody else have anything to say about the police chief search? So I guess my, my question would just be, so what, what, what do we think in terms of, I guess, Obviously, it's town council next meeting, mm -hmm. but if that doesn't happen, then what, Bachman? Because we need to. The first thing is a search, and then the second thing is 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 Ting. Um, or we could we could schedule both of them for the meeting. Would you just would schedule one first, Bachman first, mm -hmm. and Ting next? You know, it doesn't have to be two separate meetings. Yeah, I think that could make sense. Mm hmm. So I guess if, if town council is not able to meet on the 9th, I can reach out to Ting and Bachelman mm -hmm. and just say, you know, maybe each of you can have half an hour or so at our meeting to kind of review things, you know. Exactly. Okay. So I will. And then if, if the town council meeting does happen, then we put them on for our September one. Perfect. Um, I'm not seeing any hands up from anybody else, so I'm going to move on to the next thing on the list, which is the Youth Empowerment Center. Um, so I know that Jennifer had some things to say from... Yep. So uh, she writes here that the CSSJC chair asked if the director could inquire into the use of the former Hastings space as a possible location for the center. The town manager and assistant town manager reported that they believe the property owners are planning for retail use of the space. Nonetheless, the town manager is going to have conversations with the property owners. And the CSSJC chair has noted that the downtown location is on a bus that 
a downtown location on a bus route would be best. The DEI staff are looking into other temporary spaces. Space mentioned to date includes St. Bridges Parish Hall, Hope Community Church, Grace Episcopal, or UU. No conversations have occurred with any of the faith communities. This is an outstanding, there is an outstanding offer to use the Amherst College Library. Other space to consider would include the Bang Center or the Jones Library. And so just to clarify, that would be for temporary space until a permanent space could be identified. I, I, um, you know, I've been on vacation for a little bit, so she and I haven't had a time to kind of debrief and catch um, to uh, connect, but I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Although if it was at St. Bridges Parish Hall, that parish hall is very large. It's got a basketball court in it. It's, it's, um, it could be utilized as a more permanent space unless you're looking for something that's brand new. Mm -hmm. I guess for me, my question in terms of space um, would be, if we do have it at a church, would that turn away people in terms of it being like a faith-based kind of center as opposed to something that was, you know, that doesn't have any kind of allegiance to anything, you know, um, like obviously like a bang center or something like that, that doesn't have any type of, um, you know, connection to a certain type of religion or whatever. Um, even though the space might be a good one because of this, that, the third, I'm just a little bit wor worried about some people being like, well, is that, you know, what are they doing there? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, are they going to be holding, you know, I don't know, religious classes or something? Because <laughs> it might be a turnoff. I was having the same thoughts. Or that somebody who practices another religion might feel like I can't go into that space because it's not part of my religion or um so i think for me i would say those would be lower priority or lower desire <laughs> locations i guess although they are again all central and um yeah i'm just i mean i'm thinking of like what is vacant downtown um and the only other thing I can think of is there was like the yoga center of Amherst used to be in the building above. I do, I'm going to call it Rayo's because that's what it was when I was in high school. And it's like Mexicalito now. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that it's not accessible, though. That would be the problem. It doesn't I don't think it has an elevator there. So that would exclude people who might need but couldn't the town give us like a list of vacant places because i don't know what's vacant you know what i'm yeah. saying or not and then especially places that are on bus routes and things like that so that then we could kind of um have an idea of which ones might be you know a better fit for for young people because obviously we're trying to make sure that young people from all walks of life are able to go to this place and see it as a safe space, safe place for them to congregate and do their activities. And when you say give a list, are you talking about all buildings or just town bent buildings? Well, I mean, I guess you would have to be the one to tell us that, Jennifer. So would the town, will the town use other buildings? Um, would they be able to kind of negotiate or would that be more of an encumbrance or like a burden? Because then, you know, obviously that that would mean, you know, I don't know, more. more well, no, I mean, if they were, if the Hastings space was available or any of these churches, those don't necessarily belong to the town. So those are all other entities. So, yeah, but yes. the town would be able to negotiate with them. Yeah. Okay, so that's, a, yeah, so that's the answer. So then, yeah, I guess I would have to, not just town buildings and whatever's available. And then for me, in terms of the youth empowerment is it, you know, besides the, 
the prop, you know, the, the actual building, obviously that's a big one, but where are things at, you know, with everything else, right? The funding, the, um, you know, putting it just, you know, establishing it so that then there could be, you know, hiring, you know, young people and so on and so forth that's gonna be leading the, the youth empowerment center. I'm not aware of any other funding efforts that have been made, or I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's in the budget for FY24. I haven't given it an overall look. So, can um, can you look at that for our next meeting so that we know? Because then you know, I think that that could be another agenda item to add to when we talk to Bachelman. Sure, sorry, I don't know if you're waiting for me. I'm typing, so. Yeah. Are you all in agreement, Freke and Allegra? Yeah, I mean, I think that we need more details. I just, I think it's been, unfortunately the meeting with town council went so long that I don't think we had enough time to focus on the specifics of everything you know, all the different project pieces that we were interested in hearing about. And I think, unfortunately, we really didn't hear much about the Youth Empowerment Center, so. Um, and when you say funding, I'm assuming that you're not including the already monies that were already allocated for uh, a, what were they doing? They were, um, It's late, I'm sorry. Um, and if for an assessment or needs assessment, right? This is the funds outside of that you're looking for. Yeah, because for us, like I said, I mean, they're just, they're just wasting money on this whole assessment piece. We already did all that work on CSWG and, and already stated that there was a needs and we already did all of the assessing. So I, I just think that it's just a waste of time and a waste of money. Um, and yeah, I just want to go to, let's establish this youth empowerment. But speaking of that, Jennifer, so uh, uh, is the town doing an assessment and i think i had seen read it somewhere how much money is it costing the town to do this assessment i don't know that there's currently an assessment that is going on currently i think that they were starting the work and then it this is now falling under the dei department and so they are are working on it i mean it's possible that some of those funds can go towards a new building um, there'll have to be some kind of outreach that happens with the youth in order to kind of understand what they would like to see in the in the building. But um, and you'll you'll have to, you know, provide what it is necessary to to attract the youth to come. But I, you know, outside of that, I don't I don't think that the assessment's going on. I know that's part of what the AmeriCorps position will be handling is is kind of thinking about youth empowerment programming. And I know that we're trying to work on programming that can possibly exist without necessarily the actual space, but just to start with programming. Yeah, I mean, I get that, you know, I, I get about doing the programming, but we need to, I mean, I'm, I guess I get it, but I don't, you know, I think I'm still, cause I've been processing that, right. In terms of, of, you all doing the AmeriCorps and doing the programming without the building. It's just kind of like, I, I guess that diverts the attention from actually getting the building <laughs> and doing the youth empowerment, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I think, you know, it, it's critically important and CSWG had highlighted that in, in their report is to have the space, 
right? And then do the programming in the space as opposed to just do the programming because then the town will be like, oh yeah, you can do programming without space. Then why do we need a space? You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know if it's a, if it really like ends up really helping in the long, in the long run to do the programming without a space. No, um, I understand. I'll bring that concern forward. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely share that with um, Pamela. Because like I said, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I, I've been processing this and this is kind of like, you know, as I stated in the CSWG report, we stated that to, to establish youth empowerment. So I think since they put that on you all's shoulder to make sure that it happens, then if you, if you start just doing programming and not really focusing on the building, then that's what you're going to be doing. And you're going to, your time is going to be taken. You are only two people <laughs> and you're already just going to be doing programming around it. So then the, the building and, and establishing the space will get put to the side. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if, if it's a, such a good idea given the capacity that you all have, which is really not much capacity given that you're only a two, two people organization, two people department. Um, and young people need a space. Young people in Amherst need a space, especially BIPOC young people. So, so let's add that to the agenda items to talk to, to Bachman about. Um, but yeah, if you can talk to Pamela, let her know that because, you know, the next time we meet and we're able to talk to Pamela, I want to bring that up. Philip or Freke, do you have anything to add about youth empowerment? in the choices that we have to make. Um, trying to find what is available and what is appropriate might be a little bit more than what we need to do at this stage. To put it a different way, I don't know a lot of places in Amherst. So um, if I have some direction in terms of what to look at that would be more helpful than my very limited knowledge um, in that area. That's what I mean. So some guidance from the town on spots that might be available would be helpful. Yeah, and we already asked um, Jennifer for that list. So I think we need to get that. I was agreeing with that decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no, I know. So. Yeah, I, I think that's all good and I would echo that I would be hesitant to have the space be in a faith-based organization for the various reasons you all brought up because I do think that that can bring limited access to someone then or someone not wanting to access the space and I hear you Deb on the frustration of we should just have a building because that definitely should be <laughs> happening a long time ago I just, I mean, I've been in this town for five years and we've been talking about the library for about a good five years. And I'm just like, I don't know what takes so long to make a building happen and same thing with the school that it does make me concerned that this will just get dragged out. And so I do think that having some type of programming to show that it's useful could be helpful. I do hear your concern though, that it could also it's almost like a double-edged sword, right? It could also have the opposite effect of having it like, oh, well, you could just do it out of wherever and it doesn't really matter about a building now. So I, I, I don't know where I completely land on that. I see the benefit of both sides of it. And then I was gonna say um, space-wise that, I don't know, I guess I, this would be a question for Jennifer. I don't know who owns the schools. Does the town own the school? Does the school own the school? Um, 
the town owns the element well i don't want to say owns but the town's in charge of the elementary schools buildings and the region is in charge of the middle school and high school okay because i almost wonder if since we have a regional high school and a regional mm -hmm. middle school that clearly the youth empowerment center is probably going to bring kids from outside of amherst that maybe it might be beneficial to look to see if we can use either of those two buildings like um, LSC does with the middle school in that little part of the area. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, because Phil, I think I think the thing right now is like, it's not necessary and I hear you, right? It's not like we're gonna do groundbreaking and, and, and build a whole building. That might be something, right? Five, 10 years down the road, but a temporary space we should be able to find. Um, you know, and that's why we're asking Jennifer for that list. And I think you brought up a good idea too, you know, on that list, it should be around schools and stuff like that and, their, and the use of their space. But I think in terms of finding a space, we should be able to, we found a space for Crest, but that was, that did not take a long time. So we should be able to find a space for the youth empowerment. Um, I, I don't think it needs to be anything that needs to be dragged. We can find a space and then find something more of a permanent home later. Um, Okay, uh, yeah, then, then I guess I just misunderstood what you were saying, and yeah, I, I completely... Yeah, agree. yeah, no, I wasn't yeah. saying, like, yeah, like, you know, build a whole new building. Yeah, that will come, you know, but we need right. to have a space. We need to have a space that we can call it the youth right. empowerment space, Correct. temporary space, and then and then go from there. Completely agree. Yeah. All right, so that will be something that we will revisit when we speak with Paul. Um, and I guess the last agenda item is the status of the committee. Um, so this is Philip's last meeting, as we have mentioned a few times, um, and we will miss him terribly. But wait, wait Allegra, I just want to ask Phil, are you sure you didn't change your mind and, you, and you're going to stay? <laughs> you know, you're not the only person to ask me that. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I think I'm hopping in the car and, and out. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, well, we're sorry to see you and your family go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, you've done some good work. It's been nice walking alongside you in this. Um, I know we, we said goodbyes last, mm. last time, but yeah, you know, you, this is your official <laughs> last meeting. <laughs> um, so I guess one thing would be in, if you haven't already to make sure that you in writing let Paul know that you will be resigning from the committee because then officially we will be below quorum and right. hopefully that would prioritize our committee in terms of the committees that need to interview candidates. Um, and hopefully there are candidates because I don't even know if that is the case. I mean, I talked to some people at the old young tournament that were the mentioned interest. So I don't know if they have followed up, but I let them know that they could fill out the form. Um, so from what Paul has told me, I would as chair currently be the one who would sit in on an interview committee so it wouldn't be I mean, we had all interviewed with Dr. Love and Sid and Keisha so it wouldn't be them involved anymore it would be Paul myself um, and one of the resident advisory committees and Jennifer are you involved in that in the interview process as well as our staff person Pamela will be Pamela will be okay so that would be the committee, um, and I don't know which of the resident advocates it would be. Um, yeah. But, so there are three, and then I would say I don't know where how many CAFs have been completed for CSSJC specifically. So oh. I would suggest you know at different events or family gatherings or or whatever for our Amherst residents to really try to encourage people to be more involved um so Jennifer, just so that you can kind of make that move and then 
I would say that you're probably not the only group that's falling in risk of quorum. So it is pri those people do get prioritized, mm -hmm. but I don't know who's applied. Right. And, and that's my question because I have heard that some people have applied. So how do we find out whether people have applied or not? Yeah, I can take a look tomorrow and 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 find out how many people or I can't necessarily tell you who, but I yeah. can probably tell you how many. Yeah. Um, one of the things sometimes people apply for multiple things at one time and so they end up you know someone will apply for cssjc hrc and say finance committee and they just get appointed to finance sometimes so and i do know because i've sat on these meetings that you know if they interview somebody who has a like mind as you folks here at cssjc they will recommend them to apply you know to encourage them to be on the cssjc as well I think if, if it if it helps, Allegra, I can definitely send out that email like tonight to have this committee fall under form. So then that way it does get more notice on it. But uh, I would say that my experience with the HRC is that even the process after a yes is given is that then it goes to town council and then they have to vote on it and they have 60 days to put it. 30 days, 60, I can't 30 remember. days, 30 days. And then if nothing is done, then it's an automatic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like the last three HRC um, candidates that we've put forward, that was the process on it. It wasn't really voted on. It was just kind of like, uh, it fell to, yes, that's going to happen because they didn't take it up. So I, I just am throwing out that information in that even if this happened like in the next couple of weeks, you're looking to probably not make quorum in August, hopefully by September. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it would be helpful for you to send that email like tonight after we get off just so that then I can follow up with yep. all. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. Checking in. We're behind the quorum now. <laughs> Please give us more members. Um, and of course, hopefully there have been people who have filled out the forms. So um, yeah. and, and that's why it would be important, Jennifer, if you let us know if, if there are people that applied, um, so that then we can do more active outreach, um, you know, in terms of having people, you know, apply to be part of the, the, the group. Because right now, how many, how many? I mean, obviously, Pat, um, what is it, uh, D, and now Phil, so it'll be three, but we also had a vacancy, so that means we technically have four, right? Correct. So, it would be great if somebody has connections with someone from the high school. I mean, you know, the HRC, as Philip, you know, can, can let you know, too, is typically has a high school and or college student or yeah. both on their committees, so that's also very... So another way to look at it too. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, is um, Rocky at all a good contact for um, um, Amherst College? Because that seems to, the advertisement that they do at Amherst College really seems to speak to their students in getting more active in the town that they're going to school. Like I think the last time that we did candidates, we had at least like four Amherst College students. We only took one or two, but it seemed like they have successful recruitment efforts at the very least. Yeah, I would say Rocky or Sarah Barr. So um, mm -hmm. we can send out an email tomorrow or I'll have a conversation and then we can send out an email tomorrow, hopefully asking Rocky to announce. Jennifer, when you, when you look at how many people have applied, can you also send us the link um, to the application for CSSJC because I do have a couple of people I want to kind of so that I can do right now okay if you can send that to to us now that would be great because I have some some people I'm, I'm, I have in mind that I want to share that with and see if I can um what is it persuade them <laughs> <laughs> to apply and just so you know, um, I, I do the same kind of recruitment that I used to do for youth football. Is So in youth football, I used to just see parents with kids and I would just be like, are you from Amherst? So I we do I do do the same often with 
the boards and committees, mm -hmm. even if we don't at that time have vacancies, just because hopefully when a vacancy does come up, their name will already be there. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think schools out, but. You know, it might be a good outreach to Allegra's um, Sunrise, maybe see if any of their members. Yeah. And Poku for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was going to check I with Mary. Gonna, I was going to, yeah, I was going to outreach to Mary Custard. Cool. She'd be great if we could get her on a committee too. <laughs> Just, I know I've been trying for like five years, but. She's the one that sent me the thing for me to get on CSWG. <laughs> Cause she didn't want to do it. Return the favor, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I should say Miss Custard. Cause that's how I know her, but. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'll, I'll reach to her because she'll probably have, even if she doesn't do it, she'll have like some good ideas of, of some people though that might be willing to, to apply. Maybe Liz Hay would have, again, not necessarily her, but somebody in mind. Yeah. Yeah, she might. So I guess, okay, so that's one part is us outreaching and recruiting and getting people mm -hmm. to apply. But so again, I guess, remind me the process. So we're looking at at least 30 days because whatever, whatever. But then, so then you're tacking on 30 plus what? Another 30 or another 10? I mean, no, I mean, so in theory, when it is not, so one of the things is now every, all the boards and committees are renewing, right? So it's like this massive push and it's like, multiple interviews per day for different boards and committees but typically the process is the group will you know choose a specific applicant the town manager will do a write-up and send that to the town council and that's when there's the 30-day lapse i haven't seen them say you know rescind anybody's uh resend any of the town managers recommendations for board and committee members as of yet so this process was going on when you guys were all elected as well, i mean uh, appointed as well and it then they will receive their their committee board packet in the mail you know the one that says to come into the town clerks and to be sworn in with the, the approval letter yeah i need to do that <laughs> <gasps> For this? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, okay. So are we already below quorum? Whoops. <laughs> I'm not official, official. Oh dear. It's in my bag. I have the letter. I just keep on forgetting to take it out of my bag and use the phone to call and schedule a time to come in. You mean your reappointment? Yes. Okay. That I did, makes me I did. feel a little bit better, but yes, get that done, please. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. Um, and feel free to email us with those kind of things so they're not like, you know, public record. Right. Whoops. Sorry about well, why that. Why did you have to be reappointed? Because I was only appointed for a year. Oh. Okay. The way that the town committees are, they have like different time frames like a stagnant so then that way everybody is not kicked yeah. off all at once or needs to re be reappointed <laughs> all at once no no i know that but i i just didn't know that she uh, was also just a year okay i thought she, i thought you were for longer okay no. got it well your reappointment won't you be for three years yes oh good okay uh, i i shared with the hrc that um this committee has also fallen under quorum and so one trying to encourage someone from the hrc to join but also within their networks as well so mm -hmm. good thank you all right thank you uh jennifer for, for, for sending that not a problem so i guess you know step one is the recruitment of other people but then there's the thought of like what do we do with ourselves while we are below quorum i mean i think the idea of having other people come in and just 
talk with them is okay, but I like, do we, it sounded like Jennifer was confused as to whether we even really post a meeting in those cases. Is that, am I getting well, that right? You can still meet. I know that the HRC for a very long time was consistently under quorum, but it had enough, it had enough mem commissioners so that it, you didn't know there wasn't a quorum until the actual meeting. And, and mm -hmm. it was like that for a very long time. So um, I still say that we meet, I, that you guys meet, meetings will still be posted. There, the problem there is just no decision making. Mm -hmm. So you can have conversations and discussions, but mm -hmm. there's just no decision making. So, you know, just really need to get a, a new member on board. Right. We just need to get one more member on board for it for us to be able to make sure. decisions. Yeah. Yes, and then no one to ever not attend a meeting. Right. Um, but it sounds like at least with our plan of if we have town council in, we're able to get them, and then if we have um, uh, Chief Ting and Paul Bachman come in, then we wouldn't be in decision-making mode as much as kind of conversation mode anyway. So maybe that wouldn't be a bad way to spend the next couple of months while we are um, recruiting and going through the process of getting new members, hopefully on board. So would that, I mean, if that were our plan to kind of have guest, guests to the meetings for the next few months while we're below forum so that it wouldn't, we wouldn't be unable to make a decision that we might need to make. I feel like I'm not making sense. I'm gonna start over. <laughs> if during the period of time that we do not have a quorum, we meet with guests in discussion in a way that wouldn't require us to have a decision to make, would that seem like a still a useful way to spend our time. I believe so. Um, some of the questions we are asking are questions that have been asked by others as well, or at least they have the ability to make decisions that we're interested in. So uh, in as much as we can't make decisions ourselves, it might be appropriate to have um, others that we can collaborate with or who uh, feedback or recommendations might lead to some decisions. So I think, yeah. Deborah, would, I mean, I think it was kind of your idea, but would you feel like if we can't make decisions during those meetings, it would still be a fruitful meeting to have in terms of conversation? So I guess I guess I just need some more clarity on what what does that mean, you know? So I guess like today, right? We're talking, and then I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, we're like, well, Phil, what do you think? You know, Frick, here, what do you think? Blah blah blah. You know, um, so when we're saying decisions, so if we're like, okay, we need to send a letter out, or we need to communicate this and this and this, I guess we can't do that. No, I you. So I I mean, the benefit would be that you guys can really set up a lot of things to happen. And then once you have that fourth person, it's the vote. You can't vote on anything, right? So you, if what you did here by deciding to do an email, there wasn't a formal vote taking, that was just something that was agreed, but you can't vote on anything. So you wouldn't be able to vote on minutes. You wouldn't be able to vote on other things. Um, actions. Like if you said the CSSJC, I move for the CSSJC to choose this specific space for the Youth Empowerment Center and everybody was in agreement, you can't do do that piece of it. Yeah, but what if it's we the say, formal well, vote. but what about if we say, okay, you know, uh, Hastings or whatever, and then it came back that Hastings was a really good place. Um, so we all agreed that, you know, Allegra should contact uh, Paul Bachman and say Hastings is the place we want for the youth empowerment. Can we do that? I mean, you're not taking a, an actual vote, but I would be a little bit uh, 
It's it's all technical. So I will confirm tomorrow with Athena because she knows all of those ins and outs, but there's really no formal decision making, right? That can be made. So there's no votes. And I know that then that becomes like you guys decided to hear that you were going to do an email, but there wasn't a formal vote for that. So, you know, whether or not that needed to be a formal vote, we'll find out. I can find out for tomorrow to clarify. Uh, yeah, because I think that, that that's what we need. We need more mm -hmm. clarity around what decision making actually make, means, you know, because we're not a very formal committee in terms of like, you know, Robert's rules and all that, because who, the, who knows what, who the hell Robert is. But is this kind of like, you know, we, we, you know, we're more informal in terms of our decision making. So do we get away with it then? <laughs> well, it's not so much Robert's rules. It's the open meeting laws, which is a <laughs> bigger difference. So, um, yes. Yeah. So that's why we need some clarity <laughs> because, um, you know, we don't want to violate the open meeting laws, right? If we fall be, you know, below quorum or whatever. Um, but yeah, we need some clarity around that. But I think, you know, in the meantime, at least Allegro, what you were saying in terms of having guests, right? So the town council, having the town council and discussing those issues, I don't think that, you know, I think that's fine. We're not making mm -hmm. any any decisions. We're not taking any votes. It's just listening and, and presenting our kind of concerns mm -hmm. <laughs> to them and vice versa. And then with uh, Bakum and Ting, the same thing. It's just us having a conversation. It's not any decision-making being made. It's them sharing information with us and us asking them questions. I think that one is okay. Um, so it says the open meeting law applies only to the discussion of any matter within the body's jurisdiction. The law does not specifically define jurisdiction as, uh, as a general rule. Any matter of public business on which a quorum of the bo public body may make a decision or recommendation is considered a matter within the jurisdiction. Okay, that doesn't really, that's kind of confusing. Yeah. So again, I'll I'll still reach out yeah, to, to Athena, to, but. Yeah. Talk to Athena and then let us know. But I think, I think we should go ahead though. And I mean, I still say that we meet, that you guys meet and I will still post the meetings because yeah. they need to be. In theory, they wouldn't necessarily need to be recorded, but I don't see why they, you wouldn't record them. Yeah. Let's record them because we want transparency and we want it there for, for the community. Okay. But Jennifer, I guess just last point would be, do you want us to wait before we contact the town council to hear back from you? Or can we go ahead and contact the town council um, and Paul Bachman and Ting? Well, I guess we got to wait to hear from town council first before contact Bachman. Yep. But can we go ahead and do that? Um, I would, I would, I would wait until I respond tomorrow morning. I can make sure that's something that I reach out to you guys about first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay. I just, you know, I want to make sure that we're doing it right. So there's no problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So then like worst case scenario, we wouldn't be able, to, we wouldn't meet until we had a fourth person is that would that be no, worse? I think it, no. I think it might it might be that we wouldn't be able to meet with a town council, but I think Ting and Bakum and we should be okay. able to. Well, and the other thing is you can just make a you can just vote now. There's four of you. So you can make somebody can make the motion to invite the town council just in case that is what needs to happen. And regardless, then Allegra can reach out to town council. Okay. If, Right. Oh, why don't we do a vote for everything? Uh, let's make let's um, do a vote for the town council and also Ting and Bakum <laughs> as our plan B. <laughs> Just remember to okay. So when you're making the motion, uh, I don't know Allegra if you want to create or whomever wants to create the motion and put it and share screen or if you want to just say it, but it has to be consistent so that it can kind of. Um, so the first motion would be I move to allow myself as the chair of this committee to invite the town council to the next meeting of this committee on August 9th at 6.30. I, 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 what is it, second it? <laughs> Yes. 
Um, okay, now we can discuss and or vote if nobody has any additional points of discussion. You just have to say open for discussion. Open for discussion. <laughs> I'm not good at Robert's rules. Any, any discussion points? All right, then we shall vote um, by roll call. Right, I'm supposed to say that. Yeah. Jennifer's like, stop it. <laughs> um, Deborah. Yes. Aye. Philip. Yes. Reke. <laughs> Oh, we can hear you, Freke. Can you hear me? Yes, now. now. Was, was that a yes? <laughs> well, that is a yes. That is Thank a yes. You. Okay, and I am a yes, so it passes unanimously. Um, and I put another motion on the table. I move that in the event that town council is unable to meet on August 9th, that I invite town manager Paul Bockelman and police chief Gabriel Ting to the meeting on August 9th. And if town council is able to meet that, I invite Paul Bockelman and chief Ting to the September 13th meeting of this committee. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay. Any dis open for discussion? I don't see any hands up to discuss, so I will take a vote by roll call. Deborah. I. Philip. Yes. Frick. Yes. And I am a yes, it passes unanimously and enthusiastically. <laughs> I think it's getting really late. I know, getting tired. I'm, I'm becoming <laughs> delusional. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that we have at least some steps for going forward and hopefully we'll be able to get some interviews scheduled and some people seated so that this will all be somewhat of a moot point. Um, but I will make those next steps after Philip. If you just um, send that letter today, I will send my follow up to Paul tomorrow. Um, and the next thing on the list is public comment. I'm not seeing any members of the public present with us today. Um, so we have our next two meetings scheduled for August 9th and September 13th. Hopefully those will be a conversation with town council and a conversation with Paul Bachelman and Chief Ting. Um, and with Paul Bachelman, we also would like to discuss the budget in terms of the budget and for the youth center. Um, And again, I will send out a reminder email the week before with any up any agenda requests, as long as that is okayed with Jennifer Moiston's follow up with us. <laughs> now I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, Roberts or not. Rogers, who is it? Robert? Who's Roger? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Help. It is Robert's rules of order. And so that's where all of the I move comes from. Right. Um, we should change it to Robert X. <laughs> Why does it have to be a male? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that we need to talk about tonight that we didn't think about 48 hours in advance of the meeting today? No? Okay. Well, then I do I move to adjourn or do I just say that we're adjourned? 
now you I can do. just adjourn and then someone can second and that's the end of that okay <laughs> that's the end of that i adjourn we adjourn we're adjourned we didn't second the second. adjournment <laughs> and i apologize <laughs> Bye, bye, Philip. We are gonna miss you so bye, much. We're all gonna yeah. miss you. Bye, you can, you, know, you can you can come in public comment from that's California. true. That's true. That's I, what I was gonna say Zoom is you know the way to go. Yeah, I, <laughs> Just, I think I will. I'll check up, see what's happening. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure the I'm work is the moving. Screen, yeah, but you know, yeah. But good luck Definitely. with everything to you and your family. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure yeah. serving with you all and getting to know everybody this past year. I think. Some great you bonds were formed. Mm -hmm. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yes. The work will continue. As the Milka Cabral for my country says, the luta continua. The fight continues. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>